Kate Stonecipher, and I'm a member of the AmeriCorps Watershed Stewards Program, serving with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife in Arcata, California. I'm standing here in beautiful Jacoby Creek at the Jacoby Creek Land Trust in Bayside. Jacoby Creek is one of four major tributaries to Humboldt Bay on California's rugged north coast. Did you know that Humboldt Bay is the second largest bay in California and the largest port between San Francisco and Coos Bay, Oregon? Humboldt Bay is home to over a hundred different species of fish, including coho salmon, which are listed on the endangered species list. Coho salmon are anadromous, which means they're born in the stream, and as they grow, they migrate downstream into the ocean. A few years later, they return to their home stream so that they can complete their life cycle and spawn before they die. As anadromous fish, coho salmon spend a significant part of their life moving from place to place. That means that they need to use different types of habitat at different parts of their lives. So let's talk about what makes a good habitat for coho salmon. In order for a habitat to be good for a certain species of animal, it needs to have these four things food, water, shelter, and space. When we're thinking about stream habitat, we can think about that habitat as being broken into two different units, pools and riffles. Riffles are the shallow areas of the stream with fast moving water. In large rivers, you might think of them as being rapid. And then there's pools. Pools are a little deeper with slow moving water. These units provide different habitat needs for salmon at different parts of their life. Ripples are the part of the stream where salmon most commonly spawn. They build shallow nests in the gravel called the red. It's very important for the reds to have plenty of clean flowing water with lots of oxygen. In a few weeks, the baby salmon will emerge from the gravel as alevin. Alevin have an attached yolk sac, which they will use for food for the first few days of their lives. As the yolk sac disappears, the alevin grows into a fry. Now it will need to eat aquatic insects or macroinvertebrates like stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies. If there is plenty to eat and the water temperature is good, the fry will quickly grow into a par. As the fry grows into a par, it also moves out into the deeper pools where it will compete with other fish for space. They take shelter under structures like logs, root wads, boulders, and undercut banks, and eat drifting macroinvertebrates. It's important for pool habitats to have plenty of shelter so the par don't get eaten by predators like garter snakes, otters, or other fish. Another important part of pool habitat is riparian canopy, the trees and shrubs that grow alongside the banks and create shade. The shade keeps stream temperatures cool, and the vegetation provides habitat for insects, which the fish eat. Here you can see plenty of alders and some willows growing alongside Jacoby Creek. These are the most common type of riparian vegetation in our area. The par begins to move downstream as it grows from a pre-smolt into a smolt. It loses its markings and turns silver with harder scales. Soon it will be ready to enter the ocean. Smolts encounter many obstacles on their journey to the ocean. Dams, ditches, and diversions can make it tricky for smolts to find their way, especially if the water is low. Low water means less space to move, as well as less shelter. In the ocean, the smolt grows into an adult salmon. It eats things like herring and krill. A couple years pass, and the salmon is ready to return to its home stream to spawn. When it enters the river, it gets bright spawning colors and a big hooked nose called a pipe. Salmon ends its life cycle in the same place it was born, by digging a red and laying its eggs. It dies shortly after spawning, and its body becomes food for nearly every living thing in the forest and stream. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me as we learned about habitat for coho salmon.